Hey guys, I'm back. Okay, uh, steel's still a little hot, so I'll use my uh, I'll use my tongs. I'm gonna do another video on some improvised uh, different types of improvised tongs, and maybe I'll show you how to make them properly. But you see, it turned out okay. You know, like a little thick on the a little thick on the right hand side there, my right, your left, but everything's pretty close to in line. Now, I don't need anybody to tell me in the comments how railway spikes aren't the greatest steel for, for tools or for anything, but um, in, in uh, okay, opinion time, uh, in, 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 in my experience, um, there's, there's railway tracks everywhere. You know, it's like so in a, in a SHTF, SHTF situation, uh, there's going to be spikes all over the place, okay, and they're 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 probably um, uh, again, in my opinion, one of the easier uh, and most ad uh, most adaptable uh, pieces pieces of steel you're going to find anywhere to to do anything, and they will do you they will do you just fine in a pinch. You might have to sharpen a little more. You might have to uh, you know uh, rehammer them back into shape sometimes. But they will do you, and and they're and they're not that bad. Uh, I've I've got a ah, shoot. I don't have it here. I should have thought of that. I've got a couple of railway spike knives that I made a few years ago, and and like I I took them down to like real thin, real thin spines, and I've I've batoned small wood with them. I've I've used them everything for everything from a butter knife to batoning. Um, yes, you got to sharpen them. Uh, I've had to only re-straighten one. Um, that was my own fault. <laughs> I shouldn't have been using it like a pry bar. But really, they're fine. Okay, once you harden and, and temper them, they're, they're fine. Okay, so I didn't want to make this video too long, but uh, I, I, I am going to, uh, I am, uh, this one, it, it, it is going to be a bit longer. Sorry about that. Um, I want to touch a little bit on PPE, personal protective equipment. So what I'm doing uh, right now in the relative safety of a shop here, uh, inside out uh, from the elements and everything, is I'm wearing a, I'm wearing a leather apron, okay? So this is not, it, it's not that it's, it, it's not fire retardant. I mean like it, it, it's, it's protective, right? It bounce, uh, things, sparks and slag and stuff bounce off you. So that's good in a way. Now, instead of wearing safety glasses, what I like to wear is a shield, okay, because when I put my head down, uh, maybe I'll show you, when I put my head down like this, oh, for Pete's sake, when I put my head down like this, it closes off, I don't know if you guys can see that properly, but it, it closes off the space, or, or minimizes the space between my apron and my face, okay. I don't like wearing it too close because it'll fog up. But what, what's happened to me with safety glasses is, is I've had things, especially standing like, uh, you know, j just, just looking down at an angle, right? And so your safety glasses, your safety glasses are fitting on your face like, like this, okay? I've had, I've had stuff when I'm grinding, especially when grinding, I've had it hit my, I've had it hit my apron and go right, and, and, and go right up here and hit my cheekbone because I have fairly pronounced cheekbones and phew, right into my eye and and you know eye injuries well in a in a SHTF situation man that is that is going to be a killer for you a real killer okay so I also wear uh, these are just small double lined uh, roper gloves um, you can wear the big heavy Welding gloves, if you like. I, I find they hurt my hands after a while. <coughs> okay. And, of course, some sort of ear protection. I don't, I don't care what you use. If you melt some candle wax and jam it in your ears, just make sure you can get it back out. Uh, use cigarette butts, for crying out loud. Uh, <laughs> okay. But I use these. I shoot with these, too. All right. So... I'm also going to give you a suggestion, okay? Um, take it, uh, take it any any way you like it, 
Okay. If 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 you're gonna if you're gonna be setting yourself up to do to to be able to do this in an SHTF uh, environment, okay. So like I'm talking bug it out on the move nomad right now, okay. And 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 okay, we're, uh, I found a I found a safe spot. We're gonna build our we're gonna build our cabin here, okay. I need an ads. I need you know chisels, whatever, little axe, whatever, okay. But I don't have the basic tools, okay. Like I said, I'm going to do another video on uh, tongs. What, what I would suggest, you throw in, uh, now, now th th this stuff's a little heavier, right? Okay. What I would suggest is that you throw in a double cut uh, bastard file, a nice, a nice long one like this, uh, with a flat face and a round face. Okay. All right. That's what I would suggest. And, and make it a coarse one, all right, because you want to get stuff done quick, okay? It, it doesn't have to be pretty, it just has to be effective, all right? Now, as far as the hammer goes, all right, now, um, some guys are going to disagree with me. I don't really care. This is my preference. I prefer a two to two and a half pound hammer, okay? The reason is, is because I expend less energy when I'm working uh, with, with, a heavier, with a heavier hammer, Okay, then I do with a light one where you gotta just put your you gotta put your shoulders and hips and body and everything into it to make anything to make anything move. Okay, and you end up making a mess is what happens because you're swinging so hard and yeah, it, it it's just a mess. So my suggestion: take the handle out because pretty much anywhere you can find you can find wood to make a handle with. Okay, you've probably already got a knife. All right. And my suggestion is to get a cross beam style hammer, okay? Because I find I can do more with this than any other kind of hammer, okay? That's what I find, all right? You might prefer a ball peen if you like. But again, go with, uh, go with a minimum, minimum of one and a half pound hammer. Uh, you're, 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 you'll, you'll wear yourself out and you'll, you, you might even end up hurting yourself. Lighter hammers, eh, don't really like them. So anyhow, that's my suggestion. <coughs> what I'm going to do next year, I know this video is long, is we're going to go through the hardening and the tempering process with this, okay? Um, so when I go to harden this piece, what I'm going to, uh, you, you, you can either quench in oil or you can quench in, uh, in water, okay? I'm going to quench in oil on this one, all right? Um, I don't necessarily like doing a, a, a water quench because I find with railway spikes, okay, with, uh, especially with the spike knives, it's very, very easy to warp that blade. Very, very easy, okay. So when I go to, you'll be watching me, when I quench in oil, I'm going to face, I'm going to face my blade. Let's see if I can pick this up yet. Yeah, it's still a little warm. I'll put gloves on. I'm going to face my blade. And the whole shank, like this, straight at magnetic north. This, believe it or not, does help reduce um, reduce warping. Now I said magnetic, not true, okay? Magnetic north, all right? So it's going to be like this, and I'm going to dunk it straight down like, down like that, okay? I'm going to leave it in the oil until the oil stops bubbling. All right, I'll take it out, give it a quick brush off, and then and and then uh, and then temper it. You you don't necessarily have to temper it. All tempering does is even the strength of the steel throughout and and get rid of and get rid of stresses in certain spots and weak points. It just evens all the strength, and it's a it's a very good thing to do so you don't break your tools. All right, really simple. I'll get at it right now. Sorry about the glare, but I had to have the back door open a bit because of the uh, the fumes and soot, uh, minute soot that you get from the uh, propane uh, forge. I'm gonna 
I have an N95 mask. I, I forgot to grab it this morning. It says blocking on the door. I usually, I usually use one. And it's black in the front by the end of the day. Right after I've done this, uh, done this little, uh, this little exercise, I'm going to go back over and grab it. So there's no need to worry or comment on it. hot. I'm going to let it cool until it turns this color here, like a cherry red. Let her cool. Let her cool. Right. Right there. Okay, this is going to flame a little. Not super worried about it. There. We're all good. Okay. I'm going to let it quit boiling. Woo! <laughs> Bit of smoke. I didn't put enough oil in it, obviously. Thought I had enough. We all know what a thought did. Okay. There until she stops boiling. Maybe I'll just take that can outside. All right, I know the forge is pretty loud in the background. Okay, so that's not my normal quenching tank. Okay, um, I just used uh, like, like like I said, I'm trying to sh I'm trying to show things from a, a preparedness or a survival kind of thing. So that's just a that's just a tin can. Okay, you can use a, you can use a plastic pail if you have to. But you're gonna have to hold it in there so it doesn't so your steel doesn't burn through the bottom. Okay, so that's just about ready now. I'll. Uh, I'll go grab her out and show you how ugly it looks. Okay, ugly black smoking piece of steel. <laughs> okay, did it warp at all? No. Nope. Looks not too bad, a little bit of warpage, no big, no big issues though, okay? Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't give this away as a Christmas present or, uh, or, or, or anything like that to show off my skill, that's for sure. But uh, it work, it'll work, okay? All right, I'm gonna clean this off now and we'll go to the tempering stage, all right? Talk to you in a bit guys, bye bye. Okay, back again. Here's the trusty vise. I'm gonna put on my gloves. Steel's still just a little bit warm. And I'm in a little, I'm not in a hurry, but I wanna get this done so I can move on to some of my own stuff here. Okay, so here's the Tommy head for what it is. We're just gonna wipe the oil off, okay? Now you can make yourself an improvised vice out in the field or you can just hold it or anything like that. As far as an anvil goes and then uh, grid down SHTF thing goes and, and, uh, and, and, and you don't have one and you're picking railway spikes, guess what? You're right there at the tracks. You use the tracks. Okay? So I'm just going to... But as far as the vice goes... There's lots of really good channels out there um, uh, that show you how to make uh, bushcraft vices and, and uh, things like that. One that pops to mind is Subarctic Tools. There we go. <laughs> okay. 
So now I'm just going to take my file. This is the same file I just showed you. And it's a little dirty. Actually, I think this file was in my to forge. <laughs> in my to, to forge scrap steel spile, uh, file. Okay, so I'm just going to take it. And I'm going to form an edge. Okay, so remember guys, while we're doing this, this is not, I was kind of up in the air on whether to, on whether to do a video like this, because this is not pretty, it is not the extent of my skill, of my skill level, but I'm just showing you how you can do this, and perhaps one day you might either try it, or you might need it, or something like that. <coughs> I like to wear gloves too when I'm filing simply because simply because of all the sharp filing particulate that comes off these. I've had a few go under my skin and they're a real pain in the a real pain in the keister to get back out. How far down did I get? Okay. <coughs> never loan your tools out to anybody. Never, never, never. This this vice was loaned out and it came back with the handle all bent and stuff on me and I'm really choked about it. I mean like I don't know how, if, if you're going to put something in a vise that you have to crank it so hard that you're using a piece of pipe, I'll have to get it on. Ranting. Okay, so you guys get the picture. We're going to file and file and file. I'm doing this before the tempering. Okay, I'm gonna do it before the temper, and then after I've got the edge, uh, after I've got a an almost working edge on it, we'll temper, and uh, you can do whatever you want with it after that. You can put your working edge on. You guys know what to do. Okay. Okay, back again. I've got this baby filed down. Okay, I've wiped off most of the crud. Because the, the reason that uh, I, I like, like I could have just taken my my wire wheel to it and 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 be done kind of deal. Move over here a bit um, and have it all nice and shiny so I could see all the pretty colors through it. But you know what? This is how it's going to look. That's how it's going to look. It's going to look black and it's going to look crappy. Okay. So what you the important thing is is to clean that edge with your with, with your file. Get her back a ways so that you can see the color up here okay so the way I've been shown and the way I've been practicing doing it is is as soon as oh, let's get close to the camera here as soon as the very top edge the very top edge gets a tinge of blue on it bang she goes into the oil okay um, use whatever oil you got okay seriously um, I've been uh, it, it's just okay again I'm not mr. expert right but I, I've experimented with a lot of stuff over the past uh, I guess I guess I started doing this uh, just about five years ago now um, back in 2012 2011 something like that uh, so so I've used everything from filthy sludgy motor oil all the way down to beautiful fine pristine uh, peanut oil okay the sludgy oil uh, can cause a few a few problems here and there sometimes, but in a uh, fr from a survival ex um, from a survival uh, perspective, who cares? Okay, who cares? Don't get into all, don't get caught up in all the technical all the technical crap. I don't want to hear about it in the comments because I already know. All right, I already know. I I I I, I don't need to know. 
all right? Again, I'm not an expert, but I have done quite a bit of study in this stuff, all right? Both in practice and uh, in book learning theory, okay? So any oil will do. I don't need my forge on full tilt right now at this point because it does not take a lot of heat. Okay? So what I'm looking for is the blue edge. Gives you kind of a universal, uh, I believe they call it a universal temper. We're not going to get into technical terms here. I'm just showing you. I'm just showing you how to do something. All right. So I got this in my tongs. I got this in my tongs and I'm going to keep them in my tongs and I'm going to watch my heat, okay? So I'm just going to go in real quick, put her in the flame, bring her back out, nope. Got it. In we go. Oh, I should have shown you what it looks like. I'm sorry about that. Oh, it didn't quite get her. Let's do this again. You should kind of have a bit of a, a golden color right along the edge of the whole blade when you're done. There we go. Now we got her. That's the heat. Yeah, that's the heat. And into the oil. Yes, I'm standing a little funny here, but the edge is still facing magnetic north, okay? I swirl it around in the oil. I should have moved my camera here. There. There we have it. A basic, okay, it's not a perfect temper, but it's a basic temper, okay? It'll get you by. All right, guys, if you made it to the end of this video, thank you very much for watching. Um, I'm doing, uh, I, I, I want to do some more uh, preparedness, uh, emergency sort of, uh, well, not emergency, but like off-grid, off-grid uh, blacksmithing uh, videos and stuff like that, just to help you along, if you're at all interested in doing any of this stuff, okay? I appreciate your comments in the, uh, in the box in the boxes below uh, you don't have to get into me uh, about about technical this and technical that okay remember this is just I was just trying to show you how to do this in a hurry okay to get you by for what you got to do at the time all right okay you guys take care out there and have a great Christmas if I don't get back to you before then have a very, very Merry Christmas.